Hi everyone, um, this tutorial is going to be in English, even though it's not my first language. I hope I'm going to be clear enough. If I don't speak well enough, just let me know so I can read it properly. Um, today we're going to talk about, um, talk about um, how to handle your uh, video files and especially your DNG raw video files from your uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera but it could be useful for uh, any kind of uh, video file and use it in a workflow uh, with Final Cut Pro 10. Um, so basically, before we start uh, explaining anything, the first thing is for you to ask you a few questions. We're going to talk about a different kind of uh, codec and different kind of uh, video files. And uh, as you can see, uh, the files do not take the same space on your disk. So the raw files are really good quality but really big and the Apple ProRes proxy is uh, good, good for uh, editing but uh, not good quality and uh, the HQ1 is good for uh, many uh, purposes. So the first thing for you it is to ask yourself uh, some question about what you really want to do. If your point is just to shoot and to put uh, and to uh, post some video on YouTube or Vimeo or, or something, uh, just editing it in Final Cut Pro 10, then you should just set your camera and use it with Apple ProRes. Uh, codec. Do not use the uh, in that in that mm -hmm. case because that won't be useful and that will take too much uh, space on your uh, disk for nothing. The point of using uh, raw uh, files is when you want to shoot, when you want to edit with Final Cut Pro 10 then, or some other software um, and uh, grade the color of those pictures, of those images, uh, let's say with DaVinci Resolve and then go back to finish on uh, Final Cut Pro 10 to finish the, the perfect editing and then edit some uh, broadcast uh, video. Um, in that case you will use TNG Rose and you won't use Apple ProRes. Um, one last thing maybe you want to use DNG rules for is you know in advance that you won't be able to um, set your camera properly uh, on set on the field and you hope that you will be able to correct your image with the rules. That's another good idea. But um, do not count on the world to save you. It's always better to set your camera properly and to work with good video files than to try to correct them after in post-production. So try to set your camera properly and, and uh, use a proper uh, video files. Well, once you've decided to work with rows, you don't with the angel wall fries. You don't want to uh, have uh, them to uh, take all the free space on your hard drive. So you want to just to keep it smaller as possible and you just want just to keep only the files you really uh, need and uh, you will not uh, use too many space on your hard drives. So, we don't say that. When you shoot, um, you will have your um, your uh, SD card and on your SD card you will have several folders and in those folders you will have your DNG files. As you can see you cannot read them, your computer is not able to read them. So you have to transcode them, you have to transfer them into some uh, readable codec. And for that, the first thing to do is uh, to copy uh, your uh, folder, they're not the files, all the folders, you will take them and copy them into your uh, disk, onto your disk. Um, this gonna take a while, so I've prepared the thing and I made a copy there, so that's basically my SD card. And I will copy that into a folder. I know exactly where it is. I've created DaVinci Resolve folder. In that folder, I've created an import SD. And in that folder, I have uh, um, one folder per project. So I'm gonna create a new 
folder for the new project, which will tutorial. And in that folder, I will create two new folders, and you will see uh, why later. Um, first one, I will call it uh, Edit Media, for instance, and the second one is going to be Raw Files. And I will copy from my SD card, I will take all those folders there, and I will copy them into the raw files. And I can, I can delete them from the SD card, and I can, of course, dismount the SD card, and now I have my files, my DNG files, I have them on the computer, in the computer, so I can use them. But the computer still cannot read them. Um, what you have to do first is re um, remember, and maybe not somewhere, where those folders are. You will need to remember where they are because you will need to find them again later. Um, and now we can open DaVinci Resolve. I won't show you how to use DaVinci Resolve today and I want you to, uh, to open it and to create it. The only thing you have to know is to make sure that first you've created a main uh, database uh, that match the the, um, the folder you've created. You have to know that the database has in it the folders you've created. And um, you have to create a user, you have to log in, you create a new project. And that's where you're gonna uh, be able to transcode your video, uh, DNG videos. So first in the media tab, the first one, you will be able to go in the library up there. And in the library, you will be able to find the YouTube tutorial uh, folder we've created. And in that folder, we have the two folders we've created. That one is empty. And that one contains the raw files. And as you can see, you can at least read them and see them. You can play them. So you will be able to um, select the one you want to use because you don't. You probably don't want to use uh, all of them. Maybe that one is quite the same than that one, and even though it is raw file, and I will be able to correct it later. Maybe I can work with that one. That could be enough for me. Um, so I will just pick a, a few of them at random for this tutorial. Let's say that one and that one and that one and that, is that one and that one for that the files I will, are gonna use I will drag and drop them into the media pool here and I will go to the edit tab down there and there I will go to the timeline up there I will right click Create a new timeline, and that timeline is going to be YouTube Tutorial. Here we go. And I will take all my clips up there because that the clips I've selected. So I want to use all of them. I will select all of them and I will just add them to the timeline. Now I have a timeline with all my clips. What I can do, but I won't do it, I will not do it, but uh, if I want it, I could do a small uh, adjustment, color adjustment, color correction. If I do not want to, do not want to work with uh, uh, non-ready pictures, I can start uh, um, uh, to correct the few things, but I don't want to uh, right now because uh, I don't have to, I will be able to do it later, but the point of doing it uh, the, the way I show you. So I can basically uh, leave it the way it is, and I will directly go to deliver down there, and that is where I will uh, transcode my uh, videos. So the first thing I will do is just to make sure, there, I have my, my timeline, 
I will make sure that everything is selected. So I will right click on the timeline, select all, and now everything is selected. So what I will be able, if I'll show you the whole timeline, you can see that the whole timeline is selected. And now I will transcribe them. So I will go in this panel up there. I will make sure that I will render the timeline as even do individual source clips. I will render it as QuickTime, ProRes. I don't need them to be HQ right now. I told you about proxy files, they are smaller, they are good for editing, so that is what I'm going to do. I will um, select QuickTime Press for to do proxy. My resolution is, is uh, HD, and I do not forget to uh, render the audio, and I will set it same as source. source. Um, so do not forget to render the, the audio, and I will render the job too, and that is where you need to remember where it is. YouTube tutorial edit media. That is the purpose of this uh, folder I've created there. Okay, and the last thing I have to do, really important, is to use source file name. I need to keep the file name uh, the same uh, from the beginning to the end. And that's pretty much it for now. I will just add job to render queue and I will start rendering and it can take a while, maybe a night. Uh, at least it's a good moment for you to go and drink a coffee if you do. I don't. Well, we are done. So what if we go to the finder there? What happened? We still have our YouTube tutorial folder with our raw files. They are still there, untouched. And we have in our media, edit media, we have the five, uh, five uh, clips we've uh, transcoded. And now we are able to, oops, to read them and to play them and the computer is able to read them. That, that is a good thing because we will be able to go uh, edit them with, uh, with um, a Final Cut Pro and So we'll go to Final Cut and uh, as we do uh, as usual, um, I won't tell you how to use Final Cut today, but um, you will be able to create a new project and to edit your project, so I will import the media. That is where I have to remember um, where my, my uh, files are. So I've created that alias and edit media, and I will import the whole folder. So I will just take edit media folder and import select it. And here I will just add to the event I've just created and I will leave the files in place. I don't want to copy them. I don't want to have too many files on my drive, on my, on my uh, disk. So I will leave them in place and uh, I will uh, just use the way they are. I don't have to create a proxy media because there already are proxy media. I've created proxy media so I don't have to recreate them. And here it is, I am able to edit them. So I will create a new project. Guess what? YouTube tutorial. And I will now edit my project. And uh, that software, that uh, final cut is getting more and more professional and that's a good thing. So. Uh, I like it. Uh, it's getting better and better. So this is my editing. I will uh, just cross this off right there to show you how it works. Up oh, here we go. Probably the best editing I've ever done. And uh, let's say this is my final uh, final editing. I'm done with uh, all I want to do. That is what I want to do. Um, the only thing I won't add right now is I won't add the titles and I won't correct the, the, the framing right now. I will do it later. But that is the, pro the project I want to do. So what I'm going to do right now is to go up there 
in file and export the project XML. And I will save it into the same, that's a good idea, to save it in the same folder that, than the folder we've used previously uh, for our project, a YouTube tutorial. I will save there my uh, XML file. And if I go back to the finder, what happened there is now you have the FCP XML file. And now I will be able to correct the color of my pictures in uh, DaVinci. So I will open DaVinci. I will go back to Media. I will um, just create a new project. So I don't need uh, to save that one. New project. I won't save that one. Here we go. And uh, what I can do also, if I show you and I will do it, that's a good thing. I will go back to the finder, my edit media there. I have all my medias I used, the proxy media I've created. I don't need them anymore, so I will delete them. I'm not worried really about doing that because I still have my raw files there. So I can delete all the proxy medias that will save space on my disk. So I'll, and then that's the, the best way to do this. So I just delete them, that's important. And I will go to Final Cut, and what happened there, it's the file are missing. Well, that's a, that's a bad thing for me, but that's not a problem at all for the moment. So the files are missing. And uh, I will go back to Resolve, and there I will go to the Edit tab. But, in, but instead of creating a new timeline, I will go to File, and I will import XML. And that's where I'm going to import the XML file I've just created. There it is. I will just make sure that the project match the specification I need. That's fine. It tells me that eight, eight clips are missing, but that's not a problem. I don't want to search them now. I close that window, and if I see there, I have the same timeline here than the one I have in the final cut. That's the same timeline with the cross dissolve there. But we still don't have the medias. But that's not a problem at all. I go back to the media tab down there, and I go back to the raw file, raw file folder I have. Maybe I don't remember exactly which was, uh, which were the files, the clips I used, but that's not a problem. I will take the whole raw file and I will drag it into the media pool down there. And if I go back to edit, then I have my project. And these are not proxy media, these are, these, these are raw files. And now I will be able to go to the color tab and do the, 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 grade, the grading of the, the picture, do the correction of the, the, the color. And I won't explain you how to use uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, the only thing I will do is just to uh, follow the purpose of the, 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 the explanation. I will discard all the color information. Well, that's that is probably the stupid, stu the most stupid thing to do with DaVinci is to. I could have done that with Final Cut, but the point is here that you can use DaVinci to correct precisely and professionally your color. And that's the point of it. Uh, I will just put it in black and white just so you know and you see what's gonna happen. And now that I'm done with my uh, color uh, corrections, I will go back to Deliver down there and I will re redo exactly the same thing that, that uh, we did previously. So first remember, uh, right click on the timeline, select all to make sure that everything is selected, uh, go up there and select render timeline as indi individual source clips. That's important. Quick time, this time, last time we used proxy, but this time we want to finish our project and uh, uh, 
uh, in good quality. So we, we will use QuickTime Press uh, 4 to 2 HQ. That's the difference. I won't remember, I won't uh, forget, sorry, I won't forget to render the audio. Um, once again, I will render the job to the exact same folder as we did the first time. That's the same folder. And we will uh, not forget to use the source file name. Once again, we want the file name to stay the same during all the process. And uh, I guess I did everything right there. progress, everything's fine. So once again, I will add uh, the job to render queue. And I will start rendering. And I still don't drink coffee, but if you do, that's a good moment to do it because it's gonna take a while. Here we go, uh, done again. What if we go back to the finder? What happened? We still have our if, uh, XML file. We still have our um, a folder with our DNGs. But that's a good thing because if we lose anything, we can still uh, restart from scratch with our uh, DNG files. And in the edit media there, we have our um, new uh, clips and they are in black and white. That's the new uh, media, and the new clips we've created. And if we go back to uh, Final Cut, the software itself relinked the media and um, uh, put the, the new media in the timeline. Two things, uh, maybe at some point you did not uh, render the job to the right folder. So let's simulate that. Uh, I will Take that one and copy it there. And I will uh, delete the file there. Here we go. And if I go to Final Cut, one file is missing because uh, I haven't rendered it into the right folder. So what I can do is just click on it, go to File up there, Reading files, and in that window, I will select the file I want to relink. Relink. I will locate the file. So now, here it is, in the the wrong folder. I will select it. I will relink, and that's it. Now, a final cut as the file. So the second thing to do when you come back there, when you have all your files up there, is to create proxy media. Because remember, no, this is HQ. If I go there, if I go into the inspector up there, I can see that the codex is uh, 4 to 2 HQ. But that's an EV uh, file. I want, I want a lighter file. I want something smaller to work with. So I will select all of them and I will right click on it and I will transcode the media and I will ask, ask uh, Final Cut to create proxy media. So now I can work with those uh, color corrected files and um, Final Cut will be able to choose between the uh, HQ file or maybe if it need, it need more resources uh, it can use the proxy which is smaller. And I can now finish my editing. I will have the title, a nice one. And if I want to correct the framing, I can as well correct the framing. Maybe I want to do that. I'm not sure it's a good thing to do, but let's say that's what I want to do. And this is my final editing. That's the film I wanted to show. Um, now, what if we are sure that we are done? We can, of course, export the film to Blu-ray, DVD, and so on. And if we are sure that we won't, uh, we will not work on that project again, at least for a long moment, we can make more space available uh, on our disk. So to do that, we'll first uh, back up our project, so we can, at least, we, what we can do is to uh, re-export the XML and we'll export a new XML. Let's say the XML final. 
and we can uh, quit Final Cut. We won't work on that project again. And if we go to the to the Finder, uh, we can just save the final XML and the edit media, and to be able to put them in, back in in uh, place if I want to work, and I can save it. Um, uh, somewhere else in another on another disk or somewhere else so I can delete them I can um, only keep the raw files I will need I can delete a, any raw files I don't need so I will save space like this uh, doing this what I can do uh, as well is to go where I um, saved my main library my main final cut library and I will right click on that library i will show the package content that will show me uh, uh, my uh, project um, and my event to, uh, youtube tutorial and in that folder i can you see i have the original media these are alias so that that that's not a problem at all um, these are the render file i don't need them anymore so I can delete the render files. And these are the proxy media I've created. I asked um, uh, Final Cut to create proxy media to work um, with uh, some uh, smaller files. And I can also delete the proxy medias. And that will save me space on my disk. If I ever want to work again with that project, I will make sure to put the media in place the, and I can reopen their Final Cut. If I reopen Final Cut without deleting the project, it will refine and relink the, the media. We don't have our proxy media, but we can uh, retranscribe them. And um, of course, if we go and see there, Let's show you. If I um, go there and I show you the package once again, in our YouTube tutorial, the render files are back. So we can definitely uh, delete them if uh, we want to save space. So here it is. So I hope this tutorial was useful and uh, I wish you a good day.